Hey, faithful listener, thanks for tuning in to the P40 Ministries daily podcast. This podcast is dedicated to helping you grow spiritually so you can grow personally. Let's grow together by building a consistent Bible reading routine. This is Jen, your host, and today we will be discussing the book of Mark. Hello and good morning, friends and faithful listeners. Thanks for tuning in to the P40 Ministries podcast this morning. And we are going to be discussing Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 34. So as you guys know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do a New Testament episode. And on uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I do an Old Testament episode just to let the new people of P40 Ministries understand what's happening today. So we are in Mark today, and we're going to be talking more about Jesus' run-ins with the Pharisees and the scribes here today. So to kind of let you guys know what's happening, if you listen to Thursday's episode, uh, we talked about how the scribes and the Pharisees couldn't stand Jesus. They hated him. They wanted to kill him. But because they were terrified of the crowds that were always surrounding Jesus, because uh, the only thing the scribes and Pharisees really cared about was their own pride, because they were so scared that the uh, crowds would turn on the scribes if they uh, publicly killed Jesus. They would. They didn't want to do that exactly. They did want him killed, but they didn't want to do it publicly, if that makes sense, at least not at this point in time. And so instead, they decide to try to trap him in his words, which of course is not going to go well because Jesus, of course, uh, is God. And God is all knowledgeable. So let's go ahead and discuss Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 34 today. I'll be reading out of the W.E.B. version of the Bible. Grab your cup of coffee and jump right in with me. Some Sadducees, who say that there is no resurrection, came to him. They asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us, If a man's brother dies and leaves a wife behind him and leaves no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and dying left no offspring. The second took her and died, leaving no children behind him. The third likewise, and the seven took her and left no children. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection when they rise, whose wife will she be of them? For the seven had her as a wife. Jesus answered them, Isn't this because you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. But about the dead, that they are raised, haven't you read in the book of Moses about the bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Exodus 3, 6. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are therefore badly mistaken. One of the scribes came and heard them questioning together, and knowing that he had answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the greatest of all? Jesus answered, The greatest is, Hear, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all of your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. This is the first commandment. The second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18 There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Truly, teacher, you have said well that he is one, and that there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from God's kingdom. I love the ridiculous question that the Sadducees come and ask Jesus. (laughs) This reminds me of like nowadays and skeptics when they ask, I'm not even joking, some of the dumbest questions that you can possibly ask somebody. But the, the Sadducees who literally did not believe in anything spiritual whatsoever. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe, I don't even think they believed in heaven because I think that was part of the belief of the resurrection back then. But don't quote me on that. But they basically didn't believe 
from my understanding of what Sadducees are, in the afterlife. They kind of just believed that the spirit went into the ground with the human being. Which to me makes no sense because what's the point of being moral? You know, like, I don't understand that. What's the point? But maybe it was riches on earth. I don't know what they truly believed. But they were a group that didn't get along very well with the Pharisees because the Pharisees did in fact believe in the afterlife. And Jesus kind of confirms here that there is in fact an afterlife, which I think is really cool. So the Sadducees come up to Jesus and they ask him this really stupid question. They're like, okay, so if you think that there is an afterlife, tell me this, you know, there was this woman that had all of these husbands. Now, which husband was she married to in the afterlife? So in Jesus's day and age, and we'll learn more about this law later on when we get, I think, into the book of uh, Leviticus. And we've talked about it briefly before, where if a woman had a husband and uh, the husband died and left her no children, it was the responsibility of the brother of that husband to basically take her in marry her and produce a child for her. So these Pharisees come up, or I'm sorry, these Sadducees come up to Jesus and they're like, yeah, so this woman, you know, she was married to this guy who had seven brothers and all of a sudden they're all dying, but they all took her as a wife, but she never had kids with any one of them. In the resurrection, whose wife is she? And Jesus basically says to them, this is a really stupid question. (laughs) So he says to them, he's like, "Uh, you guys are sorely mistaken because you don't understand the scriptures and you don't understand the power of God. And so he says, you know, people don't marry in the afterlife. And this is where, uh, you know, we hear, you know, there's not going to be any marriage in the afterlife because we're all going to be married to God. We think of the church as being almost the bride of Christ. And in fact, that is the um, analogy that Uh, Jesus uses, that Paul uses, that Peter uses, that the church is the bride of Christ. But it's going to be a much different relationship, obviously, than the um, husband and wife relationship that we know right now. So we're not going to be married in heaven. And Jesus even says here that the angels in heaven don't get married. Now, on a side note, a long time ago, I did a podcast episode on a angels, fallen angels that come down, that came down in uh, the book of Genesis that married earthly women and had children that were almost like superheroes. (laughs) Sounds crazy now, but it was a really interesting episode, I thought. And uh, actually, fun fact, it's one of my most listened to episodes, so you should go back and listen to it. I think it's called something like Nephilim, and I think it's in like Genesis 11. It was like one of my first podcast episodes I ever did. Maybe it's even earlier than that. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it was about how angels, fallen angels specifically, came down out of heaven and married human women. And uh, the earth became really corrupt because of that. But uh, one thing that Jesus specifically says here in Mark is that angels in heaven do not get married. But he did not specify that fallen angels... Uh, get married or not, though I don't believe they do anymore. I think that was uh, done away with long, long time ago before the flood. I am going off on a, a rabbit trail, but specifically, Jesus says the angels in heaven don't get married. And as we go into heaven, we also will not be married in the same way that uh, we are married now with our spouses. I think it's just going to be very, very different when we get to heaven. And technically, every single person in heaven will be the bride of Christ, which is what scripture talks about later on. It will be the bride of Christ, though it's not going to be like a marriage relationship, if that makes sense. So Jesus is saying, you Sadducees are asking a really dumb question because you don't understand the scriptures and you don't understand the power of God. And you don't understand that People do, in fact, go to heaven after they die, if they choose that on earth. If they choose to believe in God, to believe in Jesus, then yes, they will, in fact, go to heaven after they die. That is where the Spirit goes. So then he describes this and he says, you Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. But what about this? You know about the book of Moses. You know Exodus. And so he says, It says specifically when God appears to Moses in the burning bush, he says, I am the God 
of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So basically, Jesus' point is, why would God say, I am the God of these three men, if these three men were just dead and in the ground? But no, Jesus' point was, these men are alive with God in the resurrection, in heaven. And this would have been the perfect thing to describe to the Sadducees, because I believe... Also, don't quote me on this. I believe the Sadducees only believed in the first five books of the Bible, which were the ones written by Moses. I don't think they uh, believed in the prophets or any of the other books in the Old Testament. So when Jesus describes this to the Sadducees, he was quoting from one of the books that they believed in, in the Old Testament. And I find that really interesting that Jesus often met people where they were. I think that that is really, really cool. So the fact that he was describing, you know, a a book that the Sadducees believed in and saying, you guys are mistaken because even the five books of the Bible that you do study, you do read, and you don't believe, you still don't know them. You don't understand them. You don't understand that God is saying that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who were long, long dead by the time of Moses. And then verse 27 ends with uh, Jesus saying, you are therefore badly mistaken. (laughs) And then he says in verse 27 as well that God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. So then uh, verse 28 rolls around. And one of these scribes is hearing what Jesus is saying to the Sadducees. And the scribe is like, wow, this guy answered this question really well so he asks his very own question he says which commandment is the greatest of all now i don't know if this scribe truly wanted to know the answer to that or was also trying to trap jesus in his words it's possible that he went with the sadducees and the pharisees to originally try to trap jesus in his words but was impressed by jesus's response to this question by the sadducees which, by the way, that entire question was meant to make the uh, the resurrection, I suppose, look foolish was the point of that. But uh, the Sadducees just ended up looking stupid themselves. But the scribe realizes that Jesus answered well. So then he asks Jesus, which commandment is the greatest of all? Now, many people do speculate that the scribe was, in fact, trying to trap Jesus as well in his words. Because if Jesus put a greater you know, importance on one issue of the law over another, that would make him look bad in the eyes of the people. But, you know, the way that this is, uh, the way this is looking to me, it almost sounds like this scribe was just uh, curious of Jesus's answer. So Jesus answered, the greatest is of all the law. He says, hear Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5, which is where it says that verse. And then Jesus continues to say, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that is found in Leviticus 19, verse 18. And then Jesus ends that by saying, there is no other commandment greater than these two. And that is how the law is summed up. The law is summed up by love God and love other people. That is the two ways that the law is summed up. Because if you love God, you're going to want to follow all of those laws. If you love other people, many of the laws in the Old Testament are about other people. In fact, most of them are. Almost every single law that you see either has something to do with loving God with loving other people, or with protecting yourself. For example, uh, not eating meat that has been spoiled and not giving it to your family, and just crazy stuff people used to do back then because they they didn't understand sanitary stuff back then. Jesus says that the entire law can be summed up by um, loving God and by loving other people, which if you think about it, is so true. Every single law in there, if you love God, You're going to want to follow those laws. And many of them are about loving God. Many of them are about, you know, uh, being respectful of the temple, being respectful of God's things, being uh, loving towards God, 
giving him sacrifices, you know, all of these things come down to loving God. And then the other ones, the sanitary stuff, the uh, laws about respecting other people's property and not causing destruction. I mean, all of those laws are summed up by loving other people, if you really think about it. So now the scribe, here's Jesus describe the law. He, I mean, Jesus had just summed up the entire law, the entirety of the law. And this scribe thinks about this and he says to Jesus, Truly, teacher, you have said well that he is one and that there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. So this scribe, he had a really, really, he had more wisdom, I'd say, than pretty much any other scribe and Pharisee at that point. Maybe not all of them, but he had a lot of wisdom. The problem was this scribe did not believe in Jesus. I'd say that's the one one place where this scribe got it wrong. He Because he says here, the scribe says to him, truly teacher, you've said well that he is one and that there is none other but he. Which yes, I mean, Jesus did say that God says I am one. But Jesus is included in that. You know, I don't really go off on the Trinity very often. But the Trinity is talking about how God, Jesus, and the Spirit are all connected as God. They're all God. So Jesus is God. God's Spirit is God. And then, of course, God the Father. That is the Trinity. And us Christians believe that Jesus is included in this Trinity and that he is one with God. But unfortunately, the scribe didn't understand that. He didn't understand that Jesus was included in that. He was included as God's son. He was included as part of the Trinity. And this is where I believe that he got it wrong. This is why Jesus says to him right here in verse 34 to conclude, it says, Jesus saw that he answered wisely and he said to him, you are not far from God's kingdom. So in other words, Jesus is saying, you answered wisely And uh, you got it right, but your heart still does not believe that I am the way, the truth, and the life is is what Jesus actually quoted about himself, that he was the way, he was the truth, he was the life. And he used the word back then in his language that would have meant the same I, I am, as what God had said to Moses in the burning bush. I forget what that word was at this moment, but Jesus was declaring himself as God when he said, I, I am the way. I, I am the truth. I, I am the life. He was saying, I am God. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That was what Jesus was describing. But unfortunately, you know, the scribe, he didn't understand that. And I don't know if he ever did. I don't know. And I believe that is why Jesus says, you are not far from God's kingdom. It just sounds like Jesus is saying, to this scribe. There's something holding you back from from going into God's kingdom. And I do believe that uh, the one thing that was holding the scribe back was the fact that he just did not believe in who Jesus was. It's kind of a sad story if you think about it that way, because we don't know how that ends. We don't know if that scribe ever started believing in Jesus or I don't know. But the last thing that it says here in verse 34 is that no one else dared ask him any question after that. So Jesus responded so well to every single question that everybody was like, yeah, we're done with all this. We're looking like the idiots now. (laughs) So they decided not to ask Jesus any more questions. But you know, friends, we're going to discuss the rest of this chapter on Thursday. So join in then for another episode out of Mark chapter 12 and then we're going to be moving on to Mark chapter 4 or I'm sorry Mark chapter 13 and uh, we're almost done with Mark and by the way we're almost done with Exodus as well we only have like two more chapters in Exodus before we're done and uh, we'll move on to season three of the P40 Ministries podcast so yay season three is coming up and uh, that is really exciting for me i might take a a short hiatus i am not sure yet we'll see i always say i'm going to but i never end up doing it (laughs) we'll see what happens but friends and faithful listeners thanks for tuning into this episode and uh, don't forget to go over to the youtube channel and subscribe because i'm going to be doing a giveaway soon 
Yep, I'm going to be doing my first ever P40 Ministries uh, podcast giveaway. And it's definitely going to include the YouTube channel. So I recommend going over there now and subscribing to the YouTube channel because that's going to be uh, an important thing for this giveaway. But friends and faithful listeners, have a fantastic rest of your day. Happy listening and God bless. Bless.